I love this pike. Oh, yes, I do. I love this pike, and so should you. As in the last, this pike did slay a giant beast from far away. Hilma ponders the rhyme in her mind as she catches her breath with the intention to continue digging through the bog for the iron-rich soup that would bring her more lumps and chunks of steel. Five hours have been spent thus far, and it is the afternoon, so we may very well be traveling back in the dark. But that is a risk that Hilma is willing to take today. As for now, fate seems to be on her side. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood, where we are with the triumphant Hilma Baron, the Baroness who slayed a fantastically large dinosaur in the last. Yes, there it is off towards the west, the remains of it, the Acrocanthosaurus, which, yeah, we did some poking, and it worked out very, very well for us. They can have quite the bit of range, but our pike has good range as well. And when a creature is injured, they are going to have a harder time striking us. I think in the same way that pain affects us. Obviously, it doesn't affect zombified creatures. So if we had a zombified version of that, we would probably have a, a, a different tale being told right now. But nevertheless, we're still alive and we have some more time to spend here down by the bog iron. Remembering, of course, ah, there it is. That is what we were working on, that one down there. So we can at least fit one more load of that and some into the back of our new and improved cart. But it's uh, still, I suppose, not the safest area that we're in. There's always a chance that more things might come for us. But that was the largest creature around and it wasn't zombified. So for the time being, we might just be safe. We are going to, um, well, I was going to say we'll drop the pike, but we, we might not need to. Let's just see if we can continue working on this construction here. Actually, it might not even be started. Let's see. No, I don't think so. We're going to extract bog iron, and there we go. <laughs> and there goes the sun. It was a risk that we were willing to take. We are tired at the end of all of this, but another 59 iron ore brilliant so let's see we've got some smoked meat still we'll have some of that until we're satisfied and then we'll have that nice clean water all right we are full we are tired however so let's just grab these and we're going to start to make our way back we're not going to worry about doing any butchery right now because uh well we have a lot of cured hides back at home that we're going to want to tan and while it can seem wasteful we didn't go after this thing, it came for us. And so I imagine the hatchlings that are nearby that might be carnivores, you know, they're gonna have a good time with that. Now let's see, ah, you're over here. Sarah, we just lost a bit of sight, which means that we're gonna have to rely on Hilma's good memory trait to be able to make it back home. So anywhere that she's been is going to be revealed to us like this. Uh, and wow. Yeah, she was seeing really, really far during the day, so that definitely helps us out. Are they all pine? I think they are. Mm, maybe not. They look like dead trees, actually. Hmm. We need some pine boughs to do some tanning down the line, but that's not a priority. Not right now. We are going to go and chuck all of this iron ore in here. Uh, we can still take way more with us, but the idea of sleeping out here... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm having thoughts now. We could try to sleep out here. We have a little bit more in the way of food and water. It wouldn't exactly be a comfortable sleep. It is awesome, and no doubt it will get a, a fair bit colder. You know what? I feel like we have enough iron ore for the time being. <laughs> the sound. The sound gets me every time. All right, well, we are going to cruise on back home. We seem to have no trouble in moving this. Let's just see. Okay, no, the safe top speed hasn't changed. The Trevoir is a little damaged, but it should hold together for the trip back. At least that's the hope. We'll take things a little slower as we try to navigate through some of the bushes here, but we should be able to do that without, you know, completely destroying our ride. Thank you, Sarah. You've done a fantastic job. And now we should have a pretty clear route back home. We've got our pike in hand still, though. So if, 
if someone wants to give us a little bit of trouble, we can give as good as we get. But I'm relatively sure that we're going to be dealing with a nice safe trip back, at least that's what I'm hoping for. So if that's the case, I'll be seeing you back at Hotel Oscar, or perhaps sooner if trouble finds us out here. Okay, I will say, it does seem like we are limited to 17 kilometers an hour at the moment. So I do think weight is having an effect on how fast we can go with Sarah. Because, I mean, she's hauling a fair bit of weight here. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Look at that, we're even getting a little bit more sight from that uh, moon up on high. Wow, it really isn't that much of a trip back. Um, whoa, we do need to slow down though. Let's just, uh, <laughs> let's halt. <laughs> there we go, that's better. We can go for the boulder. Yeah, it's fine. We are back where we're meant to be. Let's just see if we can kind of thread between those bushes. There we are. As our path, okay, it's more off towards our west here. Let's just go past the aphid. The aphid twins, it seems. And there we go. That should be the start of our path. Just off towards the side here a little, and that's it. So, a straight shot down? Yes, indeed. On we go. <laughs> On we go, and we accidentally smack a German Shepherd. It's fine. We're fine. We'll just move on. And there we are, back in one piece. Sarah, you're amazing. Thank you very much for that. So let's get this open up, first of all. It looks like everything is ready to be harvested here. Oh boy, that's gonna be a big day of harvesting. Yeah, you know what would be amazing right about now? A freezer, a freezer would be fantastic, but I don't think we, we have the power to power something like that yet. I mean, we can barely keep a lamp on. We have a fair bit to get shifted inside. I'm going to start doing that. I'll see you once we've got that process complete. Oh, and I say we've got a fair bit to shift inside. We actually don't want to shift everything inside because we have our bloomery out here. And that's what we're wanting to uh, put the iron ores into. So there's nine charcoal in there at the moment. We're probably going to need a little bit more than nine charcoal. So let's put in the full amount. I mean, we could always take it out again, can't we? So yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And yeah, we can see <laughs> we're looking at 17 iron ores to one lump of steel from the bloomery. Nine hours and three minutes but a 95% saving in time. So the more that we put in, the better. That's going to be a tomorrow thing. In addition to the plants, which we can harvest pretty much all of them, it seems. We desperately want to do that before the crows get to it. So it's probably going to be a harvesting day tomorrow and then working on the bloomery the day afterwards because iron ore doesn't go off. And yes, we do have some corpses here as well that we could look at processing. And I think we will, because we don't want them to go to waste. No, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be kind. So we're going to get Sarah off of this thing. There we go. Sarah, you're free. Let's mount up on you and get you back inside. And you know what? We're just going to keep our wooden shovel up here for now. If it goes missing, if I need to look for it, you all know where it is now. <laughs> with that, let's rest our pike up against the bookshelf and let's get some sleep, Hilma. Hello, hello, good morning. Let's start our day by getting a little bit of light on. And with that light, let's have a look at crafting some pies, eh? Actually, it looks like we have some new things in here. Under food, we have boiled ground nuts and prepared ground nuts, which we actually have, and in other a welding kit. It's a welder combined with a fireproof insulating blanket. Advanced welds and repairs to tempered steels. Ah, very nice, but very far away from where we are. Actually having a proper arc welder is entirely different than having the makeshift one that we currently use. But yes, we want to do some proper cooking, making some nice meat pies. 16 portions sounds like a fair amount to me. Let's have a munch on that to get going and some of that lovely clean water too, which we will top off. Right, well, I think we're mostly going to be using the wooden shovel outside to do all the harvesting that we need to do. And having a look down there, no one's grown up yet. That's fine. Let's grab the shovel and we'll get to work. And we're gonna take a little break there just so that we can 
munch on some more of those fresh pies of ours. It's one of the reasons why I decided to make them in the first place so that we had proper food while we're working. We're just under halfway done and we're already in the afternoon. So hope we can get it done mostly today. And the sun has set and it's too dark for us to continue working. But as you can see, we have a ridiculous number of cattails, cattail rhizomes, strawberries. And I believe over here we've got buckwheat as well, which is just fantastic. Obviously, the buckwheat is something that I believe we are going to be able to process in here. Let's just go and remove the chitin powder from there. And yes, we can get the buckwheat placed into there which we will make sure we do this evening. But I think in general, we just want to try and get a, as much of the stuff inside and down into the root cellar as possible. In saying that, the strawberries, we probably want to dehydrate. It's the cattails that we want to get inside. Okay, well, supposedly that's nearly everything sorted out. We're just going to grab a few of the extra little bits and pieces that have been left to the side here. All right, so a fair bit's been shifted inside. Over here, we're going to load some buckwheat into the windmill, 46 pieces of buckwheat, which is gonna allow us just to get a whole heap of flour from this. So let's remove the brake and start milling. I don't think we can insert multiple types, unless maybe we can. Yeah, it looks like we can. I don't know if you wanna mill chitin and buckwheat at the same time. <laughs> But uh, who knows? Let's remove it anyway. We've got about 640 uh, units of chitin powder now. So we're looking pretty good in that department. Over here by the smoking racks, let's see. We don't actually have any food in here at the moment. So I think we're going to start to just try and dehydrate some of these strawberries. We could also put the smoked meat in again for another run. It looks like we only have seven strawberries here at the moment. So I'm assuming most of them were actually brought inside and are in the root cellar at the moment. It might be nice to see if we can preserve strawberries in other ways, maybe jams or something like that. That would be really great. So I think for now, let's just try and see if we can get some more dehydrated meat. And yeah, all of that smoked meat that we have there is now locked and loaded. We need to have 500 more charges in here. So 500 it is. And we need 500 in this one as well. And down here, 425, which we can get close to. So we can top that up from elsewhere. Excellent, they're all doing their thing now. We're gonna grab the few pieces of smoked meat left, <laughs> cough out a lung, and yeah, the iron ore, that is gonna wait for a while. And after all of that, we're gonna have to work through preserving that food so that we're good for yet another year. And yeah, there are ways that we could maximize everything. We could have more smoking racks so that we can preserve ridiculous amounts of meat. But right now, Hilma has an abundance of food, especially with a farm this big for, for one person, that's more than enough food to feed her throughout this winter. And I suppose the night is somewhat young. We could have a look at what we would need or if we're even able to make jams at this point. Well, okay, indeed, we can actually make a fruit jam. So having sugar is important, which of course we can get from the strawberries in the first place. Now, I guess the thing is, it does last for a week, but surely with canning, we can get that to be a lot better. Canned fruit. We have a canning pot. We need to make some glass jars to contain them. And it takes 24 at a time of whatever we're putting into it. And then we just need that sugar. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we'd want to try and make is uh, just sugar. I don't think we can actually see our pantry from here, though. That's the only issue. Actually, I'm wrong. We can. It is within range. Okay, well, I say let's make some sugar until we get tired, eh? And honestly, I think probably two hours is, is going to be enough. That's going to give us 55 portions of sugar. We'll use the fresh strawberries, of course. Or, you know, we could go for the dehydrated fruit because we're wanting to preserve the strawberries in a different way than dehydrating them. Yeah, let's do that for now. Well, we're very wary at this point. Still not exactly tired yet, but we got ourselves some fresh hot sugar. What you'll also see with our food over here is that it is going to be getting cold and colder to the point where it is going to freeze and so we're not going to have to stress about trying to preserve it so quickly wow we've got a lot of chitin powder i don't think we're going to need to process anymore at least for a little while and <laughs> we have a lot of flour in terms of a pantry this is just brimming with resources so 
I, I'm, I'm going to say, like, after we do this harvest, we're probably not going to replant for a while. Because, yeah, Hilmer will be able to just relax and focus on other things. Pretty wild, I know. So, with that in mind, let's have an early night. Yeah, we'll turn off our lamp, return to our bed, and we're going to have to grab our sheet because uh, I've been doing some automatic moving of things. And that does usually mean our blanket gets uh, moved. There we go, Hilma. Good night and good morning. The sun is not up yet, so we're going to start our day off by just making some pies. They last very nicely throughout the day, and we can make fruit pies now, which I'm gladly going to do. 24 of them, in fact. And of course, we are going to use those dehydrated vegetables first. I mean, we could be using the fresh stuff now, but I kind of just want that to freeze. There we go. Delicious. We'll have that last meat pie there, and then dive into the fruit pies. Not as much in the way of calories, but in terms of vitamins that we're getting from them. It's going to be good. It's going to be very good. We'll pop on over to the fire to drink the water from there, just because there's going to be more of it. And now that I say that, I'm not seeing it. Is it frozen? Oh, no, it's it's moved. Okay. <laughs> There it is, and we, we've even got another large clay pot of water <laughs> in the cupboard as well. Let, let's move this one back. There we go. All right, so let's grab the pies, turn off our lamp. We're actually overburdened at the moment. Too many pies. Well, I suppose we don't have to be walking around with our blunderbusses. It does help. It makes me feel safer. How far off sunrise are we? Well, it says it's the dead of night at the moment. Um, let's just go and remove some products from the mill. That's our flour, which will bring that and all of the chitin powder into home. Ha, huh. that's interesting. <laughs> I was contemplating how we were going to spend our morning before the sun rises, of course. And uh, for a fermenting vat, all we need is a water faucet. Let's have a look at that, eh? Turning on our lamp here. Let's put our shovel down for the time being. Okay, so for a water faucet, we need a pipe and we need a set of pipe fittings. And we have enough chunks of steel right now to make a pipe, but not the pipe fitting. I don't think we have any lumps left. Obviously, we're going to have more once we're done with processing all of the iron ores that we have outside. Let's just spend, yeah, two and a half hours. We'll make a pipe to begin with. And there we go. Any sunshine yet? No, no, still too early for all of that. Uh, this is going to wear us out a little bit doing this work, but I still see it as a good use of our time because uh, if we can get a fermenting vat, we can get the good stuff. Oh, we still have one lump of steel left. Okay, good, good. We can make this thing happen. Or at least we can get closer to it. And I know there's probably other things that we could be doing for sure. Ah, look at that, the sun has risen. Okay, well, we've done that portion of that work at the stage. We'll have some more fruit pies. Pretty much the rest of the fruit pies, damn. Okay, well, there's more on the table. And, and I think the way to think about this is it's not actually a whole pie. These are just portions of that pie. Uh, we will try and grab some more of those, take them outside with us, and we'll wield our shovel as we have some farming to do. Ah, uh, excuse me? Crusher camp spotted. Yes, stop churning up the earth. Oh my gosh, is that down below? No, it's not in our pen. Crusher camp. What does that mean? Okay. Ah. The shuffling corpse of a large feathered bipedal dinosaur with grossly bulging legs, massive hulking shoulders, and a vicious pointed beak. Its tattered feathers are stained with black, sticky liquid. Okay, it can't see our current location. We need to deal with that now. That is the first time that a zombified dinosaur has gotten close to us, and it is very close. We're also hearing a fair bit of noises up there. We're hearing crunches. We could have a whole horde moving through here. Let's just have a quick look at our map. Okay, well, we do have the ability to see hordes, toggled on so if there was a large group moving through there we'd know about it it's large enough that i think it's going to be a problem so we're gonna turn around and start to head back inside asap we're going to turn off this lamp save electricity we're going to drop that shovel and we've got blunderbusses 
but we are most certainly going to need a pike. With pike in hand, let's go jump on the back of Sarah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. We're going to head around the corner here, first of all. Now, is Sarah going to be faster using this? Probably. I imagine because this is a zombified dinosaur, it isn't going to be that fast. But I, I suppose we'll see, won't we? And I guess my next question is, um, I definitely want to use the blunderbusses, but I also would like to keep the pike handy. We can't, we can't interact with Sarah while we're on top of Sarah, unfortunately. Like, I'd like to be able to store the pike, but it's, it's just too, it's just too big. I mean, it, it's going to be dangerous, right? But I think we'll, I think we'll do more consistent damage with the pike. Or we could try the hit and run tactic of the blunderbusses. The blunderbuss is also loud. That's another thing for us to contend with. Also, let's just see. Is there... Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No. No. It's a whole herd of them. Okay. Yeah. Crusher camps. Armored Camptosaurus. Okay, they haven't seen our location yet. The armored ones, it is a large four-legged dinosaur, so different from the crusher camp. It's a four-legged dinosaur with strong legs, broad shoulders, and a pointed beak has grown dense bone armor. Oh, that's just fantastic. And then, yeah, a regular Camptosaurus zombie in there as well. Oh boy, well, I, I hate that. And you know what? There is something that we could do there. We've got Molotovs. And I think that that's going to be the best. Honestly, the best choice. Okay. Which means that we need to store the pike close by. But not directly here. This this is very bad. Okay. Let's dismount here. Just tie you up there for a second, Sarah. We need to make sure that we close the doors. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. They can just stomp through. They can stomp through all these fences. They can smash through our our doors. Okay, Molotov time. Three Molotov cocktails. Okay, and let's see. The fire piston has enough charge. <laughs> as wild as wild as that sounds. Okay, let's mount up on Sarah. I think at the very least we'd want to try and close some of the gates, maybe. It's not going to make a difference, is it? It really isn't. Okay, Sarah. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to come down here. We're going to drop the pike off down here with the idea that we can ride down towards it and grab it, should we need to. We now... We need to grab a Molotov in our hand. If we can set a few of them on fire, that would be grand. Okay. Okay. There they are. There they are. And hostile. Okay, so I think the best thing we can possibly try and do is try and lure them all in together. Much slower than us. That's great. That's great news. Come on, follow you big dumb things. Now we don't have all of them, but we've got a, a decent amount of them. Let's start to run. Remembering, of course, that whenever we move diagonally, we're going to have a bad time. And right now, they actually... Okay, okay, they're as fast as us while we're running. That's bad news. Sarah isn't a super fast dinosaur, but yeah, that's definitely bad. Okay, let's light this rag. Oh boy. Okay, we're going to throw the lit Molotov cocktail. Let's just try and say here. Okay. There we go. That hit one. Well... I mean, it's, it's, it's fire, on fire, and it actually did a fair amount of damage to it as well. And that's a crusher camp. That's very good. Okay, we'll see if we can hit the other one that's close to us. Alternatively, we could try and blunderbuss it. Let's activate the back holster, draw out a blunderbuss, and see if we can get a good strike on this thing. Remembering, of course, we only have one shot with each of them. Okay, a good hit for 48 damage, and... All right, it's bleeding. That's a start, but it's still not, it's not super great. Let's try and get a little bit more distance. I want to try and use the fire as much as possible here. We're going to use the back holster again to put this away. Thankfully, that doesn't actually take us all that long. Next up, 
We're going to activate another Molotov. We need to wield it, of course. Makes sense. I really hope that this isn't going to take us too long. That's quite a few moves for us to get it out, so I'm going to want to try and get some more distance here. Oh my gosh, how are you so fast? How are you so... F okay, we're thrown to the ground. They can pick up a fair amount of pace, it seems. That one's on fire still. Ah, this is very bad. We need to stand up, we need to go. Okay, run. Sarah, you need to do the same thing. We were just completely thrown off guard there. That one's taken a fair amount of damage. We're actually okay at the moment. All right. We might be able to make it over towards where the pike is. I just want to hit them with another Molotov right now. We're going to take the risk. Okay. Hey, the crusher camp died. All right. Was that the one that was... I think that was the one that was on fire. We're going to have to throw this thing quite close to us. Let's see. Activate it. Okay, Hilma. Let's throw it directly at us, huh? Okay. We missed but we got a little bit better at throwing and we can try and bring the others back through it. Let's activate our back holster, bring out the other blunderbuss, draw it. Sarah's fine, Sarah is taking off right now. That's good, we actually kind of want her to do that. The crusher camp is gonna start to get closer to us. Let's get this shot to work, huh? Okay, decent, quite decent. Now, we're just gonna turn and run, bringing them through the fire towards us. Okay, drop the blunderbuss. Can we wield the pike in time? Yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, good. We puncture it as it runs closer towards us. I don't think they have the range that the others do. And look at that. That's another one dead. Okay, Molotovs, you are doing your thing. All right, 31 damage. Let's get a bit more distance here, Hilma. Unfortunately, we are going to be <laughs> getting out of breath here. Excellent. Okay, all right. Let's slow to a walk. You know what? Let's see if we can reload this blunderbuss in time. Stop reloading. Uh, how close is it? You know what? It can't actually see us right now. <laughs> okay, it's armored. Don't don't maniacally laugh too loud, Rakon. Okay, they're both they're both quite seriously damaged. Okay, come on. Let's do this. Let's throw down. How about you come directly towards me? Because then we have better range. One more step, that's it. Okay. Uh, right, it is armored, but we still managed to do 11 damage to it. I'd say that that is good. Let's start to make our way back up towards the fire, where we actually have one there already, but we want to try and bring it through the fire towards us. That's some good news. We can even step towards the fire and maybe try and keep it in there. Oh, this thing's going to die. Oh, fire, I love you. I love you, fire. <laughs> okay, we've got two more that are completely fine. So we need to deal with the ones to the south first. Okay, come on. There it is. All right, 10 damage, not enough to kill it. There we go, that's good. Hilma, this is fantastic. Okay, come on, we need them to go through that fire. Lure that first one in, and now we start to go down here. Come on, you dumb thing. Yes, that is it. That is how we defend our home, Hilma. Okay. Let's catch our breath. <sighs> I'm so glad we came outside today. Now, there is something to be said about not doing anything. Just being like, okay, cool, just let them pass through. But here's the thing. If they saw any of our young ones out here, they would have come for them in an instant and tried to devour them all. So maybe there is something to be said about keeping the dinosaurs inside. Yeah. Maybe we do end up just mining out most of the Hall of Memories here and keeping our dinosaurs inside. Because if one carnivore is rocking around outside, not even a carnivore, if a zombified dinosaur is like that, it will make its way on over, it will bash through the fence, and it will devour everything that's there. Now, we've got one Molotov left. Uh, obviously, we've got some fires going here. And when the fires are kind of grouped together like that, they can be a problem. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Can we put that fire out? Let's see. We're still comfortable here. It's not too hot. What I want to try and do is just unload one thing of water. You were hurt. Stop unloading. Yes. Okay. Yep. No, it's too hot, apparently. Too hot there. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, certainly. I was looking at our temperature, which says comfortable, but apparently we weren't comfortable at all. We were burning because we we're close to a fire. Makes sense. 
Makes sense. Um, yeah, thankfully, because it's not the forest, I don't think it's going to spread any further than that. The bodies should burn away. And we might still be able to get something from these remains, but I'm just going to... We're just going to smash them for now. Yeah. Smash them to pieces. If we could safely drop them into the fire, I would. I would, believe me. Uh, let's just go and reload the blunderbusses for now. They did a fantastic job for us because, you know, they still managed to um, get them bleeding heavily. And we'll smash that one. <laughs> okay. We dealt with... We dealt with a horde. We dealt with a whole herd of these dinosaurs. And it looks like the fire is starting to go out up there. And I don't think we had any others up there. So, where did they come from? Where were they going? We don't have any swamps nearby. And I doubt that they followed Hilma all the way from the other swamp. Which wasn't that one at all. It was this one up here. Hmm. They could have just been roaming. Making their way through here. But um, I'm glad that we dealt with them when we did. I really, really am. Okay, so we can continue on with our day. Continue on with the harvesting. And hopefully at the end of all that, we'll be able to deal with um, the iron that we have sitting by the bloomery. But now I'm, I know for a fact that we're going to have to do something about all of them. If we're going to keep them long term, I think keeping them here will just be for the better. As much as having this little side area is cool, I like it, I think we might just have this be where we store our vehicles. We could look at raising up a whole barn and, and stuff like that, but right now we have a space that can work and should work for them. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to take the panic that Hilma felt from that whole scenario, and we're going to uh, we're gonna run with that. Uh, that sh has changed uh, our trajectory here a little bit. Instead of continuing on with the harvest, we've still got a few more days through which we can do harvesting. Uh, we instead are going to focus on mining out this area here. We can keep the door open to get a little bit of light still, but um, we're going to be putting the pike away. Oh, shoot, Sarah. Yeah, so maybe we'll keep the pike for now, and we are going to go and try and track down Sarah, because Sarah ran away in that fight, uh, which was the right thing to do. Let's see if we can find her. Oh, I mean, here she is. She wasn't far at all. Hey, you. Let's have a look at you. See how you're doing. You're fine. You're fine. Just a, just a little bit of damage there. You're all right. Let's get you back home, eh? All right. So with pickaxe in hand, I think what we're going to try and do is chip away at most of this and keep one central pillar still. Yeah. Oh, and of course, we should make a new inscription on the wall, shouldn't we? Let there be light. There we go. Just another nice marker there. We're nearly in year two. Nearly. Well, we still have to go all the way through winter as well. Well, actually, I mean, I, when you think about it, we're in year two at the moment. Or rather, our second year. Yeah, we've kind of effectively been here for around about a year and three quarters at the moment. But enough of that. Helmer, we've got some mining to do. Now, we need to hope that while we're doing this, that uh, nothing collapses. There is also a chance that we could get some materials from doing this. And we're also getting fairly weary. So we might have to take a little bit of an afternoon break. We'll see, eh? Yeah, I'd say that's probably where we stop. <laughs> we're not going to get another one in right now. Hilma, just go have a, a lay down for a bit. Well, we're moderately weary. The sun has actually set at this point. But I wouldn't mind trying to see if we could get at least one more bit of work done. We were just kind of crawling along the floor. <laughs> You know, as you do. Yeah, let's just do let's do this last one if we can, Elmer. Hey, there we go. And we've got some Galena and some native gold from that as well. And some coal. Ha! Huh. Alright, good stuff. For now though, let's just go have that early sleep and we'll continue mining this out in the morning. We've got so many projects, so many things that I'm wanting to do. There's only so many hours in the day and only so much energy we can spend. For now, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another episode here at the dawn of time with our Baroness. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon 
who continue to make this cataclysmic content possible.